Okay, let's do one with tangent. Remember, do you remember what the derivative of tangent is? Correct. Did anybody say secant? Okay, don't say it. Take a look at this and analyze it in your head. Use your head, not your pen. I mean, you can use your pen as you're using your head, but use your head. Tell yourself, what are you seeing here? Are things working out just right? When I look at this function, what do I see? Well, first of all, my eye, my, my eye is drawn to the more complicated part, which is 10 to the sixth power. And what I really see is a power function. I don't see the tangent yet. So I see something to the sixth power. So if my hypothesis is correct, then the antiderivative will be that something to the seventh power. And now I begin to think in reverse, which means using the forward chain rule. So I'm suspecting that this will be tangent to the seventh power. And I start taking the derivative of tangent to the seventh power in my head, and it becomes seven times tangent to the sixth. Great. But then you have to keep rolling with the chain rule times the derivative of tangent, which is one over cosine squared. And how fortuitous? There it is right there. So it's exactly what I was hoping to see. Okay? If this cosine squared of x wasn't there, it would instantly become a very, very difficult integration problem. You will see this all the time. More is better. More is better because the chain rule produces more. So you want to see more, especially on tests. You want to see more, because the more you see, the more of structure there is. So, a lot of talking, but we basically figured out that this is tangent to the seventh power of x, and to make up for that seven, we need a one-seventh plus c, and it's very important that we did the rest in our heads. I just want to mention one thing, interestingly enough, that an expression like this is actually unlikely to appear. The way, a way to write this naturally, because tangent is sine over cosine, we have sine to the sixth divided by cosine to the sixth, combined with cosine squared in the denominator. So this would probably be written, I think this is a more natural way to write this, because sine is kind of a more of a basic function than tangent. And if you already have cosine, I think it's better to also have sine in the mix and not tangent. They are sort of more, more on the same level. And so you, you can imagine and maybe start planning for this mentally that you will have to look at this and be able to realize that, gee, if I break this up into, if, you, if I break out the tangent function, I'll be left with 1 over cosine squared. And that's just perfect. Because when I'm dealing with a tangent, I also want to have 1 over cosine squared of x. So this is no longer in your face. It's a little bit more subtle, and that's the integration skill. It's to be able to look at something that doesn't have this pattern in such obvious fashion and rearrange it so that you see it. Okay.